That 767 has just come out of this hangar and has had a landing gear change. Now, ever wonder how that all happens? Join me, let's find out together. Hi, I'm Dennis Bunnick. I've spent my career in travel, but my true passion, aviation. And over three unforgettable days, I was given rare behind the scenes access to FEEM's massive aircraft maintenance hangar here in Cincinnati. In this three part series, I'll take you inside a full landing gear replacement. I'll show you what happens when an aircraft breaks down and I'll show you how they're shaping the next generation of engineers. My goal is to shine a light on the incredible people who work behind the scenes to help make the magic of aviation possible. If you're as fascinated by aviation as I am, you're in the right place. Now let's head into the hangar and see it all in action. I love seeing how things work and sharing that with you. I previously filmed Qatar Airways cargo and catering operations in Doha and more recently, the Bowser Engineers in Action in Edinburgh and Dublin. I've got the links to those videos in the description below. Bowser Aerospace is owned by FEEM in the USA, and when they asked if I was interested in seeing their brand new Cincinnati hangar, I jumped at the chance. Now rather than just hearing from me, let me introduce you to somebody who knows this operation inside out. Stacy Brown, General Manager of Technical Operations for FEEM at CVG Airport. FEEM initially started as a line maintenance oper operation many years ago. Um, we support multiple customers across multiple lines. You'll see two major cargo ramps on the outside of the hangar um, and also a, a passenger ramp on the other side of the air. Fred Murphy, our owner, wanted to start a maintenance repair facility here. He built his first hangar about four years ago, and it is across outside of this hangar here. And we started doing a lines of HX. Um, so every aircraft goes through repetitive maintenance, HX keep them healthy, um, very fast paced. A nose to tail line. About a year ago they decided that really we really needed to expand into larger type maintenance. Um, you'll see this facility here this holds three larger aircraft and now we're looking at more heavy maintenance. This one is our first sea check aircraft and that is a nose to tail evaluation um, many 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 days of tearing the aircraft apart, inspecting everything, and putting it back together. And depending on the customer, depending on the need, we will constantly evolve and move into different types of operations depending on the customer. Stacy mentioned that including back office and support staff, FEEM has a team of close to 450 people working here in Cincinnati. In an upcoming video, I'll show you the unique joint venture they have with a training college on site at the airport. This is where they train the next generation of mechanics. Sounds like a good reason to hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, let's get back to our 767, where the guys are working on opening up the various access panels, both above and below the wing, to give them full access to the landing gear. Here's an interesting point. These small white bags hanging off the aircraft are the screws that belong to that particular panel. There are no lost screws on this job. Every aspect of the operation follows a very set, documented procedure. The next step is to undo and remove the various braces, springs and other pieces that help hold the landing gear in place. Team Supervisor of Heavy Maintenance, Jonathan Dobbs, explains exactly what's involved in the final steps of removing the landing gear once it's jacked up off the ground. So the first day usually is mostly open up. So we'll go through and open a lot of the access panels that you see hanging now, or some of them are removed. Um, underneath of that is a lot of hydraulic lines, a lot of access panels that have to come off to get to bolts that you can't reach or see when all that's installed. So once it starts coming off, we get all the access panels off. We have to disconnect the braces from here yeah. and they'll come down and hang, which just leaves your leg standing on its own. So while we have the airplane jacked up and all the weight off of it, these are just hanging. Right. And then once you get it just hanging, your braces are all disconnected. Up top is a giant pin right here. This is your aft trunnion pin that runs into the wing spar. Mm -hmm. So we'll pull that pin, which has got a big through bolt and a giant nut on the back of it. So pull that pin, you'll rotate the gear about 15 degrees. Then after you rotate the gear, there's a giant block on this side that has four big pins. That's your forward trunnion bearing. Yeah. It's inside of that housing. So once you pull the pins, you just lower it down. And that's pretty much the gist of it. Right. Yeah, okay. there's not as much to it as what it, what it looks. Yeah. yeah. The entire aircraft will be raised on just three points, two at the center and one at the back. These are very serious jacks. 
As you'd imagine, the raising of the aircraft is a highly coordinated team effort. One mistake could spell disaster. As the aircraft rises, the lock rings on each jack are spun into place. These act as a safety should the jack fail. It's vital that the aircraft is kept 100% level at all times. To help facilitate this, I discovered that they use a tried and tested, but rather old school method. It's just hovering above a grab, and it tells you, uh, it says tail down, nose down, uh, left wing down, and it's just um, based on where this gets on a grab, you just read it. Yeah. So, so your job in this is to make sure that the plane stays level, level. the aircraft yeah, stays level. Stays, stays level. Once the main connection points were disconnected, as Jonathan described earlier, the landing gear itself is lowered, and for the only time in the whole process, something was allowed to freefall. So super sharp, so that's what you let it drop, obviously, because it'll cut you otherwise, you don't want to catch it. Yeah, they're well, really... What's the purpose of it? Um, so you have a set, set gap that you have to have up top. Yeah. And you can cut these down to different thickness. Right. To fill in that gap and okay. make up where you're supposed to be at. Yeah. To allow for tolerance or whatever. Okay. It's super sharp, so we don't catch yeah. it. We just no. Go. It'll... And it fell just in the right spot. Yeah. yeah. Now that the landing gear is loose, here's a time lapse of the process of lowering it, then raising the aircraft further so that it's out of the way. And then finally, wheeling the whole landing gear unit away making sure, of course, not to hit the wing or the flaps on the way through. Here it is from another angle in real time. Outboard, forward, we'll go around the fan connect, yeah. and back in between the pylon. No, Ready? Once it's on wheels, it's actually quite easy to move. So the landing gear has been taken off, so what happens next? Uh, now we'll pick it up with a crane just a little bit to get the weight off of the wheels. We'll pull all the wheels and brakes off and we'll stow them over to the side. Then we'll lay the gear down so we can transport it and stand the new one up and transfer everything back over to that. So the wheels and brakes are transferred over to the new landing gear, but everything else, including the braces, struts, pins and springs, are packaged up and sent away for overhaul. In case you're wondering, the lifespan of a landing gear before it requires changing like this is approximately 10 years. The wheels, tyres, brakes, actuators and the fluids all have their own expected lifespans. This is what the front landing gear bay looks like once everything has been removed. The back one looks similarly empty, with just these main braces still needing to be removed. The new landing gear looks absolutely spotless in comparison to the old one. They come as a complete set and are packaged and transported with care. The first step is to unwrap the gear and get it ready for the new wheels. This includes connecting the main connection point that we saw the pins being removed from earlier. Once this is done, the gear can be pulled upright and the first of the brakes attached. Then next, it's time for the wheels. And just like that, the first wheel and brake kit is on. Only three to go. Obviously, they've got to torque up the wheel and put the hubcap on, finish it all off, etc. Then, once that's done, they can prepare the landing gear and uh, start to get it back onto the aircraft. Meanwhile, up at the nose, they're just installing the A-frame, the first part over there, so well, let's go and have a look. And further back, the first pieces were already being fitted too. The FEM operation here is 24-7, and it takes between 6 and 10 days to replace a full set of landing gears. This variation is due to what they may find as they do the job. For example, if once the landing gears have been removed and they find corrosion on the brackets the landing gears fit into, these too will need to be replaced or repaired. The focus is always on safety and total compliance with the set procedures and checklists. Sadly, I wasn't able to be there for the full 6-10 to 10 days, but I did manage to see a completed job 
and dispatch on the day that I arrived. Look how nice and shiny these new gears look when fully installed. Before an aircraft is released back to the airline, everything is tested. This includes jacking up the aircraft and testing the landing gear. Whilst I wasn't there for this part of the process, I did manage to film it with the team from Bowser in Dublin earlier this year on an A321 that they were working on. Being underneath an aircraft and seeing them raise and lower the landing gear is such a cool experience. This remains one of my favourite Avgeek photos I've ever taken. Anyway, back to our 767. Once all the tests are done and signed off, the aircraft is ready for release back to the airline. In this instance, the flight crew who bought the next job in flew this one out. Again, I got to do something that had been on my bucket list forever, being in a tug as an aircraft is pushed out and sent on its way. I'm so grateful for this experience and a massive thank you to everyone who helped make it happen. In the next video in this series, I join the team out on the ramp and get to tick off some more incredible experiences. I also find out what happens when an aircraft breaks down somewhere remote and they have to send the flying squad out. 100%, no, we are, we are the flying squad. And then, in my third video, I cover the training joint venture and show you how the next generation is being prepared for the future of aviation. So do make sure you've hit that subscribe button and notification bell. As the sun sets on another wonderful Cincinnati day, the theme hangar behind me is bathed in golden hour light. Uh, the sun might be setting, the day might be over, but inside the work doesn't stop. This is a 24 seven operation, as is this airport and as is global aviation. Uh, in one of the world's most regulated industries, it's these guys and girls within this hangar and hangars all over the, all over the world who help make the magic of aviation happen by ensuring that the planes that we fly and that fly our freight are safe and ready to go. I've been so grateful for the experience and the chance to step behind the veil and, and over the fence and see what actually happens, what, uh, what makes these places tick. So a massive thank you to everybody at FEMA who helped make this happen and allowed me to stick a camera in their face while they were doing their work. But thank you also to all of the other people around the world that are involved in aviation maintenance. And if this video has whet your appetite to uh, get into the aviation maintenance field, I'd highly recommend it. You're never gonna be out of work and it's a no day is uh, ever like any other. And finally, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you haven't done so yet, please do check out my channel. If you're into that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button and notification bell and you'll uh, find out as soon as I release another video. It means a lot, so uh, thank you in advance. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy travels.